It's the 21st century, and it's time for you to break free from the old ideas, the old beliefs, the old shackles that have been holding you back and keeping you bound in misery and failure. It's time to learn the truth about your power and about what's really going on in the world. Everything that you see and experience is a reflection of what's going on inside of you. Nothing more, but nothing less. Learn the truth. Change your life. Change the planet. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Reality Changer Radio. My name is Dave Dickey, and I'll be your host for the next 30 or 40 minutes, and I'll try to uh, enlighten you on some of the things that you may or may not already know as far as your connection with the universe and spirit and how you can control your life. Did you know that when negative stuff happens to you, it happens by the same process as the positive stuff? Did you know that when you do something that is fantastic and the results are fantastic, that there is no one that you can give credit to other than yourself. And by the same token, when you do something that totally goes to crap and is in the hopper and the end of the world looks like it's right around the corner, well, guess what? Then you're taking 100% credit for that too. Now, I know that we're not programmed that way. We're programmed to look at life as a series of reactions to what's going on. And that if you do your best and you try as hard as you can and it doesn't work, then there's got to be something else at play. And that something else, we're taught to look outside ourselves as if, you know, well, the car didn't run right or uh, she didn't agree with me on a certain thing or the kids were horrible or, you know, he left me, or this and that. And then from there, we start to pity ourselves, uh, bring in some guilt, if that's what we're programmed to do, and constantly blame everything and everybody that was connected with it, because we did our best. Well, you, you did do your best. You did the best with the information that you were programmed with. But here's the kicker. The people that programmed you couldn't have done any better. You know, it's kind of like, do you really want the bologna slicer to tell you how to put your brakes on your car? I don't think so. Or do you want the car guy to tell you how thin to slice the bologna when you've been doing it for years? I don't think so. It just doesn't work. So if the car guy knows nothing about baloney and the baloney guy knows nothing about cars, neither one of them are going to be able to do both. And I know it's a weird analogy, but I try to base these things as simple as possible so that you understand without a, out a lot of hoopla and a lot of fancy words. The bottom line here is, if the only information you ever had about cars was written by a baloney guy, how much are you really going to know about cars? If the only information you have about how to succeed in life is given to you by people that haven't or people that couldn't, how far do you think that success is going to take you? Now, I'm not saying that anyone uh, didn't try to give you the right information. I'm not saying that anyone withheld information what I'm saying here is that you need to look at your programmers and their success rate. And they just did the best they could, just like you, with the information that they were programmed with. But you need to start taking a long, hard look at this and understand that everything that happens in life is not because 
there's some package in somebody else's door with your name on it saying this is what's going to happen in life. What happens in your life all comes down to you and your actions and your thoughts and your feelings. And really nobody else has anything to do with it. It may seem they do. But keep in mind, you are the director and the casting agent and the writer and the editor for your movie, starring you, your life. It's your life. It's your movie. You star in it. And everyone else is supporting cast. But they can only do what the script that you gave them says for them to do. And while I'm on that subject, understand that when you're trying to manifest or you're trying to create something and you create something awesome and I'm going to give an example of a tuna melt let's say you got the best tuna melt in the world okay and let's say that's what you wanted now if you know you're able to do it then the only thing that you need to concern yourself with is the tuna melt being the best tuna melt ever now as long as you focus your intent on the tuna melt, you don't have to worry about the cook who's going to make the tuna melt. Old school programming tells you to worry about the cook and to worry about whether or not the bread is going to be stale and to worry about whether or not the tuna is going to be fresh and whether the cheese is going to be right and whether they're going to get it on time or it's going to be cold or it's going to be hot, ah, blah, blah. The fact is that whatever it is that you create, good, bad, or indifferent, has a supporting cast that you gave scripts to through your manifesting. As long as you are concerning yourself with the perfect tuna melt, you never have to give one second of consideration to the cheese or the bread or the cook or the heat, or the waitress, or whoever is involved in your play of this tuna melt, because they are all supporting members of your cast. And you can't have a perfect tuna melt without the cook doing it right, without the cheese being good. Let's think about this. What else goes into the perfect tuna melt? The bread has to be right, can't be stale. You have to get it when it, the tuna has to be right. It can't be contaminated or old tuna or nasty tasting tuna, right? So think about all the ingredients that go into that perfect tuna melt. Okay? And let's say, for instance, somebody puts in front of you the perfect tuna melt. Are you going to ask them whether or not the tuna is okay? No, obviously it is. Are you going to ask them whether or not the bread is okay? No, obviously it is. And, you, and by tasting it, you know the cook cooked it right because it's the perfect tuna melt. So understand that this logic, if you want to call it that, this analogy, applies to everything. It applies to everything that you're trying to create for yourself. It also applies to the crap that you make for yourself. Because we're so concerned with the little bits and pieces that make up the crap or make up the good that we never spend the energy we need to where it counts because we've got all this energy just running out the door in a million different areas trying to control this trying to control that oh well that's okay but what if this goes south and oh my and what am I going to do here and what am I going to do there you have to understand how the universe works and the bottom line is that you can manifest anything you want for yourself, whether it's a job or a partner or housing or whatever, okay? A new boat, a car, whatever. What you need to focus on is not the how. You know, if you let's say you're going to go for a car. The, the people making the car is a how. The dealer is a how. It doesn't matter. What matters is your relationship with the car. Are you getting the car you want? There's no second thoughts about this. 
So we're taught to spend all our energy in a million different areas so that no one piece gets all of our energy. How could you possibly make anything that way? You know, that's like asking a chef to make a cake and then, you know, call the pepper company and make sure that they're doing the pepper right and call the flour company and make sure they're doing the flour right when his only concern should be using all that stuff to make the cake. Okay, and just like with manifesting, good or crap, all of those things that were involved in it are supporting cast members to that play. Now, with that understanding, you need to realize that, let's say, for instance, you've got the perfect tuna melt. Are you going to go back there and congratulate the cook? No, there's no need to. Are you going to congratulate the waitress because you got the perfect tuna melt? You may thank her, which is a polite thing to do, and say, hey, that's really tasty. I'm really glad that's, that's a nice one. But you see, folks, you created the tuna melt. If you're going to thank anybody for a perfect tuna melt, you should be thanking yourself. Because all of these people that had anything to do with your tuna melt are just supporting cast members. And you go back there and you go, hey man, thanks for really making an awesome tuna melt. The guy's going to go, uh, yeah, sure, okay, thank you. He's making his tuna melt. Now he can make a tuna melt for 10 people that night and yours could be the only perfect one. Because you manifested a perfect tuna melt. Okay? And by the same token, when things don't work out for you, you need to look inside and see where you're focusing your intention on. Are you, are you more concerned with how people do their jobs that may have something to do with what you want? Or are you more concerned with having an awesome thing? Because, you know, we're not taught to focus on one thing. Especially in today's age where, you know, multitasking is old hat. It's like triple tasking and quadruple tasking. You know, let's look at our phone while we're walking, while we're talking, while we're on the web and blah, 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 blah. But you can't do that when you're manifesting what you want. And also you have to understand that all the things that are tied into that are supporting cast members that you don't have to worry about. You see, a lot of people get tied up in worrying about the extra cast. And what they'll do sometimes is they'll worry so much about the supporting cast that they forgot to rewrite the play. The audience comes to watch the play and it's a flop. Why? Well, instead of rewriting the play so that everything works out smoothly, you were more concerned with the guy in the back and whether or not he had all the buttons on his vest buttoned. There's things like this that just don't matter. But we've been taught that they do. And that's why most people don't get what they want. To get what you want, you need to know where to focus your intention and your energy. And it is never to be focused on the how. Never. You just need to come up because just like any great invention, any great design, you need to come up with the, the visualization and the process of this perfect tuna melt. Okay, and your tuna melt could be anything. It could be a car, it could be a boat, it could be anything. But I'm using tuna melt. This perfect tuna melt that tastes delicious, the bread is soft, the cheese is nice and chewy, everything about it. Nail it down, taste it, see it, feel it, smell it, everything. That's what you need to focus on. Don't even think about whether or not the cheese is fresh or the oven's hot or the cook is drunk or not or the waitress is going to wait on you or whatever. Don't worry about that stuff. Stop worrying about it. The moment you stop worrying about that stuff and you start focusing your energy where it needs to be, you're going to see a big difference in what goes on in your life. And understand that everything that goes on in your life is a reflection of what's going on inside of you. 
So, you know, if you start arguing with the waitress, well, then what, why are you arguing? Why? What, what is up with you? You know, because it's all you. But understand that you cannot expect different results if you don't change the way you do things. So if you're not having too much success in your life right now as far as having what you want, then you might want to take a, a deep, long look at exactly how you go about getting what you want. Because if you're sitting around going, boy, it sure would be nice if I could have this, and then you go off to bed and, and leave it, well, let me know how that works for you. Because that's not how you're going to get what you want. Now, you can get what you want. You can get everything you want. You can get everything you don't want by the same process. Because it's all up to you. You have the power to either make your life wonderful or to make it crap. The choice is up to you. Once you know how to make it good, be mindful that that same process can make it crap if you're not careful. And also, if you start slipping and you start thinking about the, the cook and the cheese and the bread and the waitress, then you're probably not going to get a decent patty melt every time. And don't make yourself wrong for thinking about the cook and the waitress, but understand how the process works and trust in the process. And the more that you do and the longer that you do that, the more you're going to gain confidence in your ability to have what you want. You know, none of us need to live in poverty or whatever that means to the individual. Most of us assign labels of wealth and, and uh, esteem and success and poverty according to what somebody else told us they mean. But how many times have you met somebody that didn't make as much money as you and they were way more happier than you? How many times have you read, I don't know if you go on Facebook, but how many times have you seen on Facebook people that don't have a dime and they're posting vacation pictures and they're posting party pictures and they're posting this and they're posting that. And you're sitting there going, you know what? I don't even have time to breathe at my job and these guys are out partying. How is that possible? Well, I'll tell you how it's possible because they care less about not being able to breathe at work than they do about being happy and enjoying life. And that's what it really all comes down to. Are you going to be stuck in the slave routine and the dogma of old school programming that doesn't allow you to have anything unless you work by certain rules and, and have all this money and all this other stuff? Or are you going to Set yourself free from the slavery and understand that the reasons they gave you to care were wrong. You can still have all that stuff by not doing it the way they told you to do it. And let me tell you this, you're going to be a lot happier and you're going to find that you have tons of time to breathe. And you may not even work at that same job after you figure out what's going on. Because if you're trying to get from point A to point B, and point B is 10 miles higher than point A, then right now you may not be working at the right job, no matter what you think you should be doing, or no matter what somebody else thinks you should be doing. And don't be doing it because you'll disappoint them if you don't do it because that's just more of the crap old school programming. You have to do it for you. Because you're the only one that writes this play, you can't possibly assign anyone else any power over your play. You have to be like the total control freak, but in a different way than you've been taught to understand what that means. You have to be a control freak because you have to understand and realize that no one else can write your play. So you can't just leave it in the hands of fate, which you make your own, or destiny, which you make your own. 
or in the hands of anything else because you are the director and the head writer and the casting agent and the editor for the entire play. So the next thing that you want that you say, you know, I've listened to Dave and, and he makes sense and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Check yourself at the door. And are you worried about how it's going to happen? Or are you focusing your intent on the thing itself and having it and seeing it and dealing with it and acting as if you have it and bringing it into physical form using your energy? Check yourself the next time. Write things down if you need to. It's a great way to keep track of things. Hey, I tried to do this, and how many times did I worry about it? Well, write that down. It's good to know. You, It's good to be able to look back and, and see your progress. It's good to be able to have some kind of a journal that you can look back on and say, you know, two weeks ago I did this, and uh, I only spent five minutes on it. I guess that's maybe why I didn't have it. Because, you know, you have to do it consistently just like anything else. But understand that when you do it, you're no longer going to expect all the supporting cast to do their job because they're going to do it. They're going to do it. Just like the lady, I, I keep bringing this back, and it's a great analogy. Just like the lady who manifested two hours of work a day when she was working seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then started worrying about whether or not her boss was going to find out that she wasn't doing much. Now, it's not like she walked into work and just pushed stuff off her desk and said, I'm not going to do it. Not at all. She manifested it correctly, but then started worrying about the supporting cast. The fact of the matter is, I talked to her the other day and she had a uh, conversation with her boss, who the one, the one that she was concerned with. And he had nothing but praise for her. He also is setting her up for a promotion and a raise. So you see, the supporting cast will always appear for your manifestation, no matter whether or not you like what you manifested. So forget about worrying about the supporting cast, be either before you manifest something or after. Because you can't have it, whether you like it or whether you don't, you can't have it without the supporting cast. It just doesn't work any other way. Okay? Now, I'm going to wrap it up for tonight. we we'll make it a little short here. But what I want to do is I want to invite everybody this coming weekend to come down to the Owl's Lantern in Fullerton. I'm going to be doing a two-hour basic hypnosis class. So if any of you guys are listening to this now and you ever wondered about hypnosis and wanted to demystify it for yourself and learn from an actual certified hypnotherapist exactly what it's all about or just got your interest in, hey, that would be cool, I'm running a two-hour basic class. It's only $40, and you're going to get hands-on training. All right, hopefully we'll get enough people in the class where everybody's going to be able to hypnotize everybody else. You're going to get uh, a personalized script to take home with you, and you're going to learn all the little ins and outs that you might not have thought of or weren't even aware of um, about hypnosis. And this will set you on the path if you want to go further. Uh, I've got contacts for you. You can talk to people to get certified and, and further training and all that. I don't do that, but I, I will teach this basic class, you know, just to wet your uh, whistle. Also, I want to remind everybody that um, every other week, we just had one this past Sunday, uh, we have a meetup group, Torrance Law of Attraction Techniques. Uh, I run it out here in Gardena, and it's two hours every other week, and it's only $10. And folks, let me tell you, for $10 for two hours, you get Debbie, who is years and years of energy work. She's a Reiki master, tachyon, the whole nine yards, and myself 
for two hours personally, you can't get a better deal. I, I call it uh, advanced uh, and continuing education in the law of attraction and manifesting. And it, it really is. Uh, we, we have a great time. We start off with a meditation, uh, then some discussion, and then the second half, we cover what's going on in your life and try to enlighten you as to uh, the possibilities here. Okay? So you can go on the website, what you think is what you get.com, and you can uh, see the times. You can click on there to go to the meetup group and, and register and RSVP. Okay? So until I'm, we meet again, um, I want to tell everybody you can have everything you want. There's no reason to not have what you want. Just remember to focus your energy correctly. Keep the faith and trust in the process. And it all works. It all works. All right, so everybody have an awesome life and an awesome rest to your week. And I love you. Good night.